I found this Hot Wheels style racetrack for my grandson. It was only $5, but I want to modify it to make it an automatic start like this. So with some 3D printing, some electronics, I'll show you how I did it on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I really enjoy watching the 3D Bot Maker YouTube channel where he does die cast racing on this incredible track that he built. It's just fun to watch the cars go and he does these tournaments. I showed it to my grandson and he loved it. Now he's only three years old, but he loves it already. So getting him this set was a no brainer. And I set it all up and it's really cool. For five bucks, it's fantastic. But you gotta do everything manually. You gotta lift the arm to launch the cars. And I wanted to make it push button for him. Similar to what 3D Bot Maker does. So I thought if I could mount a servo on the side here with a long arm, it could lift this starter bracket and automatically launch the cars. So this thing is really just press fit together. And I noticed there were grooves right here next to where I want to put the servo. I took some measurements and then I went to Tinkercad and designed this thing with some simple blocks rounding the edges. And then I cut out the center of the main block so I could slide the servo motor in there plus a couple of holes for screws. I even made a ledge so when I slide this into the base of the racetrack, it doesn't go in too far. And once I grouped it all together, it looked good, so now I just need to send it to the slicer. I exported a .stl file, brought it into Bamboo Studio. It said it would take 11 minutes and 20 seconds to print. Pretty straightforward. And the A1 Mini did a near perfect job on this thing. I did get a slight amount of stringing, but no big deal. Now, I was going to slide the stepper in from the back, but I decided to slide it in this way, and that's a little smaller, so the hole's a little bit big, but it's not going to matter because I'm going to screw it in place. But the best part is this thing slid in tightly into the base of the racetrack. So I just used some 3mm screws, one on each side, to hold the stepper motor, and now I can just mount this right to the base by sliding in place. Now next I need an arm to lift that starting gate, something long like this that'll pivot off the servo. So I went into Tinkercad and I went to their gallery and found this servo arm for a 9 gram servo. And so I brought that in and then I just extended it with some blocks and a half round piece, grouped it all together, and I had my long arm for the servo. Brought that into Bamboo Studio. It said it would take 10 minutes and 40 seconds. It looks like a straightforward print again. And the A1 Mini did an excellent job on this. But the question is, will it fit? Yes, it did. It fits so tight, I don't even have to put a screw into the servo. The length is perfect. And I clear the edge just like I wanted to. So I got this right almost on the first try. So now we need some electronics. So back to Tinkercad, only Tinkercad circuits. And I designed this circuit with a red, yellow, and green LED a switch or push button switch and then a servo motor a nine gram servo motor and all this is controlled by an arduino uno which means we need code so i wrote this code it's pretty simple stuff nothing special here and we can actually simulate it in tinkercad circuits so i press the button it's a red led for two seconds yellow for two seconds and then the green goes and drives the servo forward and then back i bought this uno starter kit on amazon several years ago and I've used bits and pieces out of it, but never really went through all the experiments. But it's got everything I need. It's got a stepper motor, an Uno, a push-button switch, some LEDs, resistors, everything I really need for this project. I built everything on the included protoboard shield. And then here's a test of it. So I press the button. Red goes two seconds, yellow two seconds, green. And then the servo lifts it and then moves back, just like the simulation showed. The bonus here is that this Arduino stack fits snugly into the base of the launch tower, so I don't have to 3D print a mounting bracket at all. And now the fun part. I press the button, we'll see a red, yellow, green, and then hopefully it lifts it high enough to launch the cars, and it does. And then resets for the next race. Here's a view of the full track, so I can press the button and we'll find out who's faster. The blue car or the yellow car? And blue car wins. Now, I ran out of time for this video, but I want to put it all on a single circuit board and put it to a bracket that mounts like this. And then either put the board on the front or the back and maybe have the LEDs popping through with the switch. But I want to do a custom board instead of this perf board. And something more like this with a smaller little micro and sockets for the servo driver. For that, I'll go to PCBWay.com because I can get 10 pieces for $5 plus shipping. And if I want to assemble it, I can do that too, but I'd rather make it a kit. And then I could also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding at PCBWay, but I use them mainly 
for their circuit boards. They do a great job, great service. You get an instant quote, 10 boards for five bucks plus shipping. So if you're looking at getting a circuit board, check out PCBWay.com. I also learned that if you go to Amazon and get the Far Out Toys NASCAR crash circuit, you can use those tracks along with the tracks from this Walmart kit, which is a Crash Racers figure eight. These are recommended to make the larger track. So with those, I'm experimenting using some boxes and stuff to build temporary tracks to figure out what we want to do. But now we have electronics to launch so we can press a button and try it all out. And I got to tell you, I'm not sure who's having more fun here, my grandson or me, because I'm loving this. The next thing I want to attack is this finish gate. I want to make this electronic and maybe even add a timer to it like they've done on YouTube. But I've done this before because if you're a Patreon member and you go to chepclub.com under electronic projects, there's the Hot Wheels Drag Race finish gate that I did for an article in Nuts and Volts magazine 11 years ago. And all the details are there in a downloadable file. And if you want access to all this, join these fellow Patreon members and you can get it too. Thank you so much, my Patreon supporters. You make all this possible. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.